am Quisha Umemba and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the third video in an installment of series where you get to follow along with me on my weight loss journey. So for those of you that may not know, a month ago today I had a vertical sleeve gastrectomy, otherwise known as the BSG or the sleeve surgery. And yeah, I want to just keep up with the cadence of letting you all know how I'm doing week by week. Now, I will confess, I did not record last week. Let me pull my notes up here. Because uh, it was my first day, uh, or first week rather, back in the office full time uh, after taking a month long sabbatical, doing a little work here and there, but, but basically off, as off as I can get. And so work was going and I was offboarding a client and onboarding the client and just life was happening. And and, and a lot was happening like here too, mentally between my ears as it relates to this surgery. So we're going to talk about a few things today and I'm going to try to keep this to 30 minutes. I'm going to keep this to 30 minutes. Uh, but I want to just talk about how I'm feeling, how I'm doing, what I've learned and experienced in the last four weeks since coming back from Tijuana, Mexico, having the surgery. You probably haven't noticed my face is probably slimming out in every, every video because the sleeve is sleeving. It is, it is doing what it's supposed to do. And so the scale is dropping significantly. Of course, I'm still not sharing the number. I will when I reach a milestone. I'll just put it like that. Uh, but of course, I have plenty of non-scale victories. And if you saw the thumbnail uh, image, then you know some serious droppage of inches and, and numbers on the scale are happening. I couldn't be happier about it, especially because of the way that I feel. I, I sleep so much better. Of course, I said in the in the first video and second video, I have no pain whatsoever in my body. And I can't remember the last time having no kind of pain whatsoever. So if, if that is all that happens, I am so, so very thankful and grateful and happy for that. But of course, a lot of things have been happening since then. So let's get into it. All right. First thing I want to talk about is head hunger. Oh, so I... You know, I remember because I have several surgery twins. I'm in a few Facebook groups on um, a few groups on Facebook and I have a lot of surgery twins. And I remember seeing some of the comments from some of the ladies like, oh, my God, I'm hungry. I want to eat everything. And I was like, they must have cut all those hormones out of my stomach because like literally, you know, when I, once I hit ketosis in my, in my pre-op stage, it really took away my appetite. And then after the surgery, I didn't have an appetite. And then the second week, I really didn't have an appetite. But the third week, last week, when I didn't make a video, when I was busy, when I was coming back to work and, you know, life is life and then things are happening, I had an appetite. And what I soon realized toward the end of the week, maybe day six, as I had been just kind of working through things and talking to people about some things that I was feeling and experience, I realized what I was experiencing is called head hunger. And head hunger it's different from belly hunger. Belly hunger, your stomach's growling, it's time for you to eat. You haven't eaten in several hours. You're physically hungry. But head hunger is you're not physically hungry. However, it's 12 o'clock and you should be eating lunch right about this time. So why aren't you eating lunch? Or you've got a plate in front of you and you got to eat everything on this plate, even though you've only been able to take three or four bites because that's all that your new stomach will allow you but you were raised to finish all the food on your plate and there's a ton of food left on your plate. And so I dealt with a lot of those things last week. I'll give you a couple of examples. I, I know for a fact on three occasions in week three that I chewed food and spit it out. Okay. Now didn't do this. Of course, I'm eating at home, not really going. Actually, I went to my first restaurant um, this past weekend. We went to Papa Do's and I think I ate two shrimp because I got a lap uh, a crab cake and then my son got like the Mardi Gras pasta and he doesn't like shrimp so me and my husband separated his scared of shrimp I ate two shrimp and I ate like two bites of my crab cake and I was out for the count that's it like it's a waste of money really for me to be going anywhere out to eat unless I plan on just bringing it home and I literally ate on that crab cake for two and a half days okay but last week, I or in the third week, I remember it was a Sunday, we made Cajun salmon. I love salmon. I love seafood. And I wanted that salmon so bad. And I had it for lunch, and I had three bites, and I was like, oh, it's so good. I want more. And I took two more bites, and then I started burping, okay? 
So, but, so this is something you should know if you're considering the surgery. Your new stomach will tell you when it's full, but you have to listen uh, and know the signs so you know to stop eating. Many people complain of their nose watering. A lot of people will say their eyes will water and some people will say they burp. Well, I got the third one. So I know, I actually know I need to stop before I take that last bite. Cause you know, you have this feeling of fullness, right? But it's still like, oh, it's so good. I just want to eat more. And so when I get that last bite and I'm like, oh, that was it. That was the last one. So I'm starting to learn now like my capacity for when I need to stop. Well, it's been a lot easier in the fourth week, but the third week, I, I just I just struggled with this. And so I was eating a salmon, I had three bites, and then I force-fed two additional bites to get them down and felt full, you know, the feeling of feeling full. And I wanted some more salmon, but I just could not. So I said, okay, I'll save it, I'll eat the rest for dinner. We're talking about three ounce salmon now. It's not even a huge, big, huge piece of salmon. So I did the same thing for dinner. I had my three bites. I forced two more. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just being honest with what I did. And I was like, oh my God, I want this salmon. It's so good. So I'm laying in bed. And that was dinner. So I'm laying in bed. It's like nine o'clock at night. I'm still thinking about this salmon. Like I really want to finish this salmon. It is so good. I love salmon. So I go back in the kitchen and I'm in the bed. And I realized when I put the first bite in my mouth, I cannot eat anymore. So guess what Quisha did? We should choose the salmon up and spit it out in a napkin. And every bite I chew and I spit out a napkin and I chew. And I and then the salmon is finished and I'm sitting back like, oh, that was so good and I'm so satisfied. So I was patting myself on the back. I thought I had this great strategy that I could use whenever I had a taste for something, but my stomach didn't have the capacity to hold it. And so I probably did that. I did that two other times. I can't remember exactly when I was eating when I did that. And then I talked to someone afterwards and really discovered that it's not really the best habit. It's still me, you know, mentally wanting to eat more than my body is requiring me for it to eat. So after doing some, you know, really some soul searching, identifying, you know, what is the issue? How am I feeling? Am I really Hungry? Actually, no, I wasn't. I was actually really thirsty, right? And so a lot of times, you know, your brain can't tell the difference between if you're hungry or you're thirsty. And a lot of times we just misinterpret that we're hungry, but it's really we're thirsty. And so then I looked at, because I keep everything in a, in a tracker, it's called the bariatric app. And um, and I realized I haven't been hitting my water, but it's still a struggle. I had no problem drinking water before the surgery. I could do 64 ounces plus per day. But with the reduced capacity, trying to get all of the nutrients and foods that I need and then trying to get the amount of water and everything I need is a struggle. I can probably at this point take about six ounces of water at a time. And then I can probably do two and a half to three ounces of food at a time. And I mean, that is pushing it, right? All right. So that's what I discovered. Head hunger is real, but I'm glad that I was able to reel it in. It's after the whole fourth week has gone by. I've not done that chewing up, spit it out thing at all. I've not felt hungry. I've really just explored, okay, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Do you need to increase your, your water? Do you need to increase your protein? Um, and so um, that has helped tremendously. So just be aware, head hunger is real. And there's some things you can do, some strategies you can do as well. Like I have little six inch plates, right, um, that I use. And so uh, if I don't finish all of it, or even if I do finish and I hardly ever do, then it's like, okay, I don't feel as bad from having like a nine or 10 inch plate. And it feels like I haven't even touched a dent in my food. Um, okay. So that's head hunger. I want to talk a little bit about my, my macro intake. I talked about that some. So after you have bariatric surgery of any kind, it's really important one that you hydrate, you get your at least 64 ounces of water in the beginning. you you know, the goal was like 40, right? So um, now I should be getting hopefully probably between 50 to 60 per day. I am getting better, but I've not, I think I only did 64 ounces, maybe two days so far in the whole four weeks that I'm post-op. And I only did that because I discovered mermaid water at Sonic. And so mermaid water is a root 44 size water that comes with one pump of sugar-free syrup, one pump of sugar-free raspberry syrup, 
um, peach syrup, sorry, peach syrup, raspberry syrup, and then lemons and strawberries. And if you're going to get it, get extra lemons and extra strawberries and thank me later. So it is very refreshing. It is sugar-free minus the, you know, the fruit. Um, and I've been able to get my 64. I don't know what it is since the surgery. Water just doesn't, it doesn't taste the same. Even putting like, you know, crystal light and things like that. It's just been a struggle. Now I have been drinking protein water. That helps me as well with my protein as well as my fluid intake. And to me, it doesn't taste that bad. I know some people don't like it, but I personally don't have a problem with it. Okay, um, what else? So that's water. Protein is a big one too. Protein was a struggle when you're in the liquid diet, even when you're puree stage. I'm more, I'm supposed to be in the puree stage, but I'm in the soft stage. So I'm eating soft things, of course, salmon bites. I'm eating tuna, I'm eating chicken salad, I'm eating boiled eggs, I'm eating egg whites um yogurt so i feel like i'm able fish eating a lot of fish um i feel like i'm able to um get the protein now so i can even i at least get 70 i'm sometimes getting 100 grams of protein a day which is not bad for where i am in the process um let's see what else carbs still very low carbs matter of fact i looked yesterday i think i had 33 carbs all day so um just think about it you know a lot of times like for instance I was a, diet, a, a, a certified diabetes care and education specialist for a, a number of years. And we always told our patients with diabetes, like, oh, when you eat your plate, eat your vegetables first and then eat your protein. And then you want to eat whatever carbs you have left. What's well, the complete opposite when you are um, post weight loss surgery? You have to get the protein in. And so you eat the protein first. Well, by the time you eat the protein, you're full, right? So you eat the protein first and then you eat your vegetables and then the carbs is like a little, little sliver. Um, but honestly, you just don't have the capacity to even get to carbs. So aside from the little carbs that are my yogurt, you know, occasionally once a week I get a sweet potato. I may have some honey carrots or something like that, really soft. Um, but yeah, I'm, I just, the carbs are so low. I don't think I'm in ketosis, but I have been probably in the last couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, it's still a very, very low carb diet, which is probably why the weight is just melting off of me, literally. Um, okay, so that's my macros that I wanna talk about physical activity. I am up now from the 15 minute walk I think I shared in the first or second video. I'm doing 30 to 40 minute walks now. Um, really excited about that. I did get weak a couple of times, so I've discovered that I need to drink at least a half of my protein shake before I go on my walk. And I will be on, I'm just going to give y'all everything, right? The recommendation for my surgery is that for the first couple of months, they want you at five to 600 calories per day. I am very much weak at five to 600 calories per day. And I knew that I needed to be able to, you know, I'm self-employed. I need to be able to go full steam ahead. I'm very active. I don't just sit in that, you know what I'm saying? And, and so five or 600 calories a day, is just not going to do it for me and my activity level. And so I personally, and I will be telling my doctor this later this week when we have our appointment, which is shameful. You shouldn't do things and then tell your doctor, but I'm a nurse and that's my excuse for the worst patients. Um, but I do do a minimum. Sometimes I get a little bit under 800, but I, mean, I try to aim for a minimum of 800 calories to a thousand calories. Some days it is easier than others, but I have found if I can stay between 800 to 1200 calories that I don't feel weak. I don't feel lightheaded. I don't feel dizzy. I feel like I have enough calorie and fuel to last all day. That's what's been working for me. And the scale is still ridiculously crazy with the amount of weight that I'm losing. As a matter of fact, last week I lost four and a half pounds. So I think I'm okay. As a matter of fact, um, one of the things that I've been doing is, is at the end of my day, if my um, calorie count is too low, then I eat an avocado. I can't eat a whole one. I eat a half avocado. Um, but avocado is good for you. It's healthy. It's the healthy fat. It's got some fiber in it. Um, but it also, depending on the size of avocado, avocado can be like 200 to 300 calories. So I will do that to give me a boost in my calorie and fiber content as well. All right. Physical activity. I still have four more weeks to go before I'm released. My surgeon does not release you to do any kind of physical activity before 60 days. So in another month, I'm excited to be incorporating some strength training, some resistance bands, and some things like that. I'm still going to try to take it easy because I still have that one incision pain. I've talked about um, the incision where they actually pull the stomach out. It's a little tighter and I've heard it can last up to eight weeks. Uh, it's definitely tolerable, but I can certainly still feel it there when I do certain things. So I want to make sure that I don't push it because I'm known for 
pushing it and I want to make sure I don't do that. So how am I healing? I'm healing fine. All of my incisions are, have closed. I'm now treating the scars. And so um, the, the bigger incision, which is about an inch, I'm using um, a couple of different things on that, like silicone tape. I have some Mederma. I'm putting bio oil all over my stomach as well. So I have little incisions. Um, I would say the biggest things are the complications that I had. I think I talked about complications in my last video. Um, but I'm so grateful and so thankful that I've not had the major complications that I hear a lot of people complain about. Not once have I had nausea after the surgery. Not once have I vomited. Not once have I had heartburn, which is really common after the surgery. Not once have I had what's called dumping syndrome. And dumping syndrome is when you eat something too fast or if you eat something that's high in sugar, like your body just reacts to it a certain way. You can break out and sweat and shake and vomit and throw up and feel like you're going to pass out. And it affects people differently. But I've not experienced that because I'm not eating anything fast and I'm a fast eater. So I'm really making sure um, that I'm not having any of those kind of issues. So the, the two biggest issues that I had was one, I had the surgical tape reaction because I am a, a allergic to a tape adhesive. I had the allergy to sutures, which was the first time that ever, ever happened. And that was pretty gnarly. Um, and then it actually ended up spreading to my lips and my eyes. And so when I went into urgent care um, after the breakout, the nurse practitioner said, well, they use tape on your eyes and your mouth when they put you under for anesthesia. So she thought that I was having a late reaction to that as well. Put me on five days of steroids and uh, it seemed to clear up. Now, I was on so many things um, so if you go back and watch the second video it, it was much more in depth than the little short version that i'm giving you here but that was my complication major complication number one major complication number two is kind of tmi but it, i mean it's, it's it's what you should know and i think a lot of women deal with this as well i'm one of those women if i take antibiotic chances are i'm going to get a yeast infection okay and so i was on 10 days of uh, antibiotics after the surgery and yes i got a yeast infection um, I did do some over-the-counter meds. They really don't work for me. So I always have to call the doctor and get the fluconazole pill, you know, that, that one pill that you can take and knock it out. So I took a couple of those and I felt fine for a few days. And then I felt like it came back. And this time it came back with a vengeance. So I've never had yeast rash on my body. I know I've heard other people having it, like on the feed and things like that, because this is fungus. Um, but I did develop a yeast rash under my um, right arm, under my breast, uh, and of course the yeast infection as well. And so then I had to get on like five days of fluconazole and then a couple of creams and things like that. And now I am 100% good to go. Um, so if those are the only two things that are going to happen in the post-op period, I can't complain. I feel amazing. Um, it's really not been a big issue. Like I said, I sleep better. I've slept, I've slept better in the last month than I have in years. And I feel absolutely amazing as well. So I'm healing well. And I can't wait to give the doctor that report. I think it's about time for me to get my 30-day lab. So I will be scheduling those today. And I'll let you know what those look like. Uh, I'm taking all my vitamins. And speaking of, I don't think I ever shared the vitamins. So one thing you should know about bariatric surgery, aka weight loss surgery, is you will have to be on vitamins. If you do one of the bypasses, then you're going to have to be on vitamins and supplements for the rest of your life. It's my understanding that with the sleeve, you can do it for two or three years and then just resort to taking um, one multivitamin. Not everybody, like if you're healthy and you know, you're know you maintaining it with your diet and things like that. I know some people that are several years out, they just say, I just take my one bariatric multivitamin a day and that's it. But initially... You're going to be on a, quite a few supplements. And so some of the things that I take every day are, let me see if I can give this to you. I actually have it written down because I take it at certain times, but I take a, a, a probiotic. So for gut health, oh my God, I should do a whole video just on, there's so many things I've just learned on gut health. It really is the second brain and, uh, and shame on me for being a nurse, even though I'm not clinical and I haven't been in a decade, but shame on me for just not being as aware of how just important the gut is to your entire body. Um, yeah, so that's something that we may, I maybe I'll dig into on another day. As I'm learning more about it, it's where I love to share. Uh, but I'm on a probiotic. I take that daily in the morning. I take calcium twice a day. Um, and, and a lot of the medications that I have have other things in them, right? So I know, you, you know, the B vitamins, I've got them inside of, you know, my multivitamins. So I take that every day as well. 
um, the magnesium is inside of my calcium. There's some, something else that I can't think of that's, uh, oh, I take a vitamin D every day. I take omega-3 twice a day. I hate that big old pill. Um, let's see, the iron is also inside of my multivitamin as well. So I try to get vitamins and supplements that have as many uh, of the other nutrients that I need so that I'm not having to take so many. Um, but those are just a few of the main ones that I'm taking right now. I take collagen. Also, it's powdered. So one of the things that I've researched has not happened to me, and I pray it does not, is that about three or four months after weight loss surgery, some people as late as six months after weight loss surgery actually start losing hair. I won't be mad. I mean, I can stand to lose a few strands, but I don't, my locks are, re I really love my locks right now. And so I'm hoping that doesn't happen to me. So I'm taking biotin uh, drops and then collagen powder that I put inside of my water or whatever I'm drinking, which is water. Um, just to help prevent that. And I actually started taking the collagen and biotin when I was on the pre-op diet because I'm like, I'm just going to get on top of this early because I really don't want to see any hair loss, hair thinning, and, you know, things like that. Um, so, yeah, I take those. I thought it was going to be a, a big struggle for me. It hasn't. I guess I know that there's a, a, a end game or an end result down the road that I'm striving for. And so I just look at it as it's just something that I've got to do for right now. But I am interested to see what my first labs are going to look like. So I need to call my primary care doctor and actually get those scheduled. Um, so we'll do labs like every 30, like 30 days out and then like 90 days out and I think six months in a year. And I'll keep you posted on those things as well. So that's one month post-op. Oh my God, I can't believe it. All right. So we talked about head hunger. We talked about my macro intake, physical activity, healing, complications, the medications I take. And then weight loss. I've lost quite a bit of weight. I'm not going to, again, I'll probably share very, very soon coming up on what I consider to be a major milestone. And so when I hit that milestone, I will say um, what that number is for now. I'll just say I have a lot of clothes to give away. I have a lot of clothes to give away. And it's unfortunate I really can't shop for any either right now because I'm dropping weight too fast to spend that much money on new clothes just for a month from now to have to buy a lower size. So I'm really, really excited about that. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. If you have questions, please put it in the comments below this video. And I will be back in two weeks. I think I can go to two weeks now instead of every week, letting you know how I'm doing at the six week post-op um, um, time frame. And yeah, this is fun for me. And people have been watching and telling me you're finding it helpful in different groups and things like that. So I'm super glad to hear that. All righty. That's all I have for now. Until next time, y'all take care. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Oh, wait. I forgot. Six months ago, shameless plug, six months ago, if you can see this book, I launched my first book ever, Public Health Entrepreneurship, Navigating the Intersection of Purpose and Profit. If you're interested in entrepreneurship of any kind, if you're in the healthcare profession, public health profession, if you are a helping professional and considering ways that you can leverage your expertise, monetize your skill set, package your genius, start and build a profitable public health consulting business, you need to get your hands on this book. It is an Amazon bestseller and you can find it on my website at quishaumemba.com slash book. All right. Until next time, take care.